here in the middle. Uh, just impressions of Jeff Lockheed today. Obviously, in that spring, it seemed like you guys, and, and you were saying that he felt kind of head and shoulders above most of the other guys in the competition. Today seemed like a reflection of that, but what were your impressions of Jeff? Yeah, I think uh, we talked about this at the end of last week. I think the spring game is always way overblown in terms of its its value or the, the immediate impression. But yeah, Jeff had a great spring. Um, I thought he did a pretty good job today in terms of what he was asked to do. Uh, had a few drops, as, as did Taylor. Taylor had a, a few drops that were kept with some drives going up you know, early there. And then we were pretty limited in what we did. But as far as what what he needs to do and what he needs to do to, quote, be the guy, he had a very, very good spring. Right next to it, Mark. Uh, had, had Charles been playing offense to this extent during practice, you know, this past month, and does anything about just seeing how explosive he can be today do anything to weigh whether or not what side of the ball he ends up on? <laughs> well, uh, yes and no. I mean, he, he was, throughout the spring, he would, he would come to the offense for some one-on-one -on -one stuff, some drill work, just to, to keep that fresh. And for a guy like, like Charles, I mean, he, he was out there lining guys up on offense. That's how much he knows our system already. And so that, that's why we felt comfortable moving him in the beginning, is, is if we needed to flip him back, today happens, you know. So, uh, yeah, as soon as, those, as soon as the teams came out and he was on that team, I knew exactly what was, what was cooking. He was, the, I think, the Vegas favorite for MVP there for today. What did you think of Braylon coming out today? Not know? that we would bet on anything. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What did you think of Braylon today? How do you think he looked? After watching film, made a couple plays, obviously, with the ball in his hands, which was encouraging. He had a couple uh, big plays earlier on in, in uh, some scrimmages against the, th the threes. You know, so today it was a little bit um, more realistic. But he's a guy that just, I think, I think physically everything is there from a, you know, knock on wood from a rehabilitation standpoint. And now he just needs to, to totally cut it loose from a confidence standpoint and from a mental standpoint. Mark, your center is a new position for you guys. How do you feel like you guys have performed this spring and then today? It's not a new position. Well, for sorry. We usually had a center. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, replacing Hronis. We are replacing Hronis. Um, uh, it's been good. It's been competitive. You know, I think it's kind of like when you're talking about playing quarterback, that, that position's vital. Uh, but you're also when you're talking about quarterback, we had two, three, four guys rotate in there. And it's just going to be a mix and match deal at the end of the day of who, who are the best you know, chess pieces, and if we have two tackles that we feel good about, we can slide whoever, Matt Pearson uh, around, uh, you know, Tyler Johnstone in the mix, all these other guys in the mix. Cameron Hunt had a, had a really good spring at center. Um, and then the other guys I'm going to blank on, of course, right now, Jake Pisarchi and a couple of the guys that we've worked in there give us some, some flexibility. Yeah, second one. Mark, uh, can you talk about some of your true freshmen who played today, the defensive end, the quarterback, the cornerback? Uh, can you just say which one of these you know you feel is legitimately has a chance to play in September? So say that again, the defensive end, the quarterback, and who was the other one? Cornerback. Um, are you talking about Canton? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, Canton had a really good spring uh, as well, and, and I think about practice nine or ten really started cutting it loose. And again, when when you're you know when you first show up, these guys. They don't know where the bathroom is, you know, let alone what the scheme is or what some of the other things they were doing. And you start to get a little bit more comfortable. Same with Ugo, same with um, Alex Ofadale, uh, Travis, certainly when you're the quarterback, there's 10 million things going on. Uh, and they did a good job of kind of just digging through that and grinding through that. And, and their best football certainly is ahead of them. Uh, and I thought Travis did a really good job this spring of just playing with confidence despite making a million mistakes. We want guys to make a lot of mistakes, and he did, he did a good job of that, making, making new, new mistakes. Any of those guys more likely to play than the others? We'll see. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Uh, certainly, you know, the skill set, and then Ugo, I forgot to, to finish the question. Ugo, Ugo and Canton uh, certainly have flashes of, of being capable of doing that, and it's just going to be a matter of, of uh, you know, depth and everybody else around him and, and the the, the uh, competition amongst our staff for Charles Nelson and all that other stuff. Big picture, looking at the team, way in the back, big picture, looking at the team coming out of spring last year versus coming out of spring this year, what do you notice is one of the biggest differences in the identity of this, this year's team? Um, you know, each team is different. Each team, even if, even if you have returning guys, there's different just confidence levels and voices that, that come up. 
but uh, I like our competitiveness. I thought I thought today, I thought that you know, especially defensively, I thought we ran to the ball fairly well, especially at the beginning when, when a lot of guys were in there. You know, obviously, then there's some, some big plays pop and a couple trick plays that popped, and so that can be a little bit misleading. But I like our competitiveness. I lo- you know, I love our guys. I love our culture. All, all those things haven't changed, uh, and that's that's the great part. From now until fall camp, it's theirs. You know, and, and uh, I feel very comfortable in putting it in the hands of some of the leadership that has developed. And then we need to get better between now and fall camp. Coach, uh, were there any guys that you thought had a really good practice or really good spring practices, and then kind of struggled out there today? Anybody else that you would have liked to have seen more out of? I'd have to watch the film to be able to to, to answer that. There, you know, again in a scrimmage situation uh, such as today, a million, you know. If you're the tailback and the fifth string guard is in there and things break down, it doesn't look very pretty. And the, you know, a lot of those guys had had uh, pretty productive springs. Uh, I would have to I'd have to think about that for a second on the other part of it. Sorry. Over here on what? Mark, what is your timetable with making a decision about Charles, and how tough of a decision is it when he seems to be valuable kind of both ways? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's a matter of it. You know, the collective bargaining agreement of if he can play 60 minutes, I think mean, is what, what it'll uh, come out to be. We'll have no timetable on that. I think it'll be uh, obviously based upon depth on on both sides of the ball. He has proven that that he can, you know, be an immediate uh, uh, microwave situation of jumping in and playing offense. And so hopefully that wakes up a few receivers that that, that need to 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 dial in the, the details. Uh, but he, he is a fantastic football player. I mean, he's like a, he's like a little kid out there that's really tough and smart and, and just loves football. Right. Mark, uh, over here, what did it mean to you guys to kind of have Marcus back and pay homage to him before he starts his new job? No, that was, that, yeah, that was cool. That was really cool. It was, uh, it was funny, before the draft, a couple weeks before, he, he, was, he was jacked that he could be here for the spring game. And so it's just, you know, again, it just pays, it pays tribute to both him and, and this program, this community, the fans. That, that I mean, that was like his main goal is, hey, yeah, I, I talked to my agent, we're going to get the media done at this time, and I'll be back, you know, I'll be back in time for kickoff. And that was, that was again, very him. And a, and a great, you know, great moment, I think, for everybody with the, not only the, the, the video, but the, the tribute there. That, that was really, that was really cool. Coach, back here. Uh, you mentioned a little bit uh, working on the leadership during, during the camp. And obviously, big shoes to fill. We just mentioned with, with Marcus. Who do you see as those individuals? And did you have you turned the off season completely over to them, or will it be more of a committee? Uh, the latter part, both. Uh, you know, it has to be. You know, we're not we're not going to kill these guys in the off season with a bunch of stuff. They have to to, to do kind of what we want to do from a culture standpoint, it has to be on them. And we put, you know, put a bunch of guys in, in positions of leadership or opportunities to lead uh, throughout the spring and, and was very encouraged by, by that. Um, Jeff Lockie is a very natural leader. Uh, and, and as I said the other day, it's, it's very important that people respond to him, that they, you know, they do. Um, uh, Tyler Johnstone is a fantastic leader. Uh, you know, Royce Freeman is a guy that does everything right and needs to be more uh, vocal. Uh, and then on defense, I think we have some very established leaders in terms of DeForest Buckner, Alex Balducci, Rodney Hardrick. All those guys have done a very good job of that. Uh, and so then in the off season, it's it's a combination of you know they're with the strength coach now for a, a long time in terms of, of you know, who's with them the most. And then that's when it comes back to those guys <laughs> leaning on each other and pulling on each other to to do the right thing on and off the field. We have Matt Lubick and back outside of him and wants him. Mark, Mark uh, Jalen Brown had some big catches today. And where does he so- sort of fit in when Devin Allen comes back? I mean, you're going to have pretty much your full complement of receivers plus Braylon. I- is he a factor there too? I think so. I think so. He was a guy that got winded today. He was in on a bunch of plays and was was struggling there at the end. But uh, yeah, he's a guy that, that again came in as a, as a mid-year guy and, and just thrown into the fire. Uh, and, and the light has come on for him. And so that's been very encouraging. He's a physical guy, uh, really strong hands, uh, loves to compete, uh, and just kind of, again, is a kind of a quiet worker that, that goes about his business. Awesome. Mark, in back here. Uh, with Charles, does having a new quarterback play any factor in that and wanting to give your quarterback as many weapons as possible? 
Uh, we like to have weapons, whoever the quarterback is. You know, I think that that's uh, you're just more multi-dimensional, uh, if that's a phrase. Uh, you know, being able to have a guy that can line up. He can literally line up at every position on offense except tight end. He could probably play tight end, actually. But, uh, you know, he knows the, the, the system that well. Uh, and then you combine that with a bunch of other versatile guys, whether it's Royce or Thomas or, or you know, some of these other guys that can, can play multiple positions. So with the production of Carrington, Brown, Addison, does that kind of help your decision to maybe send Charles to defense? Um... Sure, I think certainly that's part of it. And then again, kind of as we talked about, his his intelligence uh, allows you to kind of experiment with him, and then and then not miss a beat if he comes back to, to offense long term. Um, and then also, I think it, again, it's going to create it's going to create some good competition in the offseason between the corners and the and the, and the receivers, or the, the DBs and the receivers know that hey, you know this guy can this guy can do a lot of things, and that that filters down to somebody. Uh, so it's a good good competitive situation. Does he have a preference? You've exceeded your limit. Oh, what's that? Does he have a preference, do you think? Not at all. He, he is, he's, you know, there's guys you talk to about playing opposition or, or hey, let's consider this, and he, he is, he just loves ball. He loves, I mean, he would, he's probably running out the track right now, go play baseball, go paddle in the river or something. You know, he, he just is always doing something. Uh, fantastic, again, scout team guy. When we're out there doing, doing special teams, he, he just loves competing, loves football. One more, if no one's got one. Andrew's going to make a Pacquiao Mayweather prediction. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Pelham mentioned that Henry Mondew was a guy who he felt was hands down the most consistent on defense. Uh, offensively, like, do you have a, a guy that you would single out in that way as uh, from practice one to practice 15? Hands out most consistent. I would pr I mean, I'd probably have to say Royce. Um, you know, Royce is another guy that's just a fantastic practice player, fantastic worker, and he's a guy that, you know, a la uh, Haronis or Marcus, these guys that have, have a lot of credibility but are kind of quiet as younger players, he, he really needs to, to develop into that role, and, and he's, he is, you know, he, he's, he's coming out of his shell a little bit, and just a, I mean, just looks the part, has that credibility, obviously is produced on the field, produces in the classroom, and uh, just a, 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 you know, a guy that, that you'd like to have a hundred of. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you.